Rub up your engines! A 2007 Ford Edge. Guy's owned it for quite some time. It's got about 120,000 miles or so on it. What kind of shape is it? Is it a worthwhile thing to buy? Well, you're gonna find out. This one was made in Oakville, Ontario. Hello to my friend Tony in Oakville, if you're still there. But they weren't gonna make them anymore in 2024. They said, oh no, we're gonna electrify. Well, guess what? It says, oh, we just started building the new generation Ford Edges in Oakville, Ontario, and they are powered by gasoline motors. They are not electric. So much for Ford and their electrification process, right? That's starting to go right down the toilet, right? They were gonna just make these gasoline ones in China, but they're still making them in Oakville, Ontario. And the idea of making electric versions seems to be fading into the far future as people refuse to buy the stupid things. As I've said over and over, they may make them, but will people buy them? Well, it looks like people aren't going to buy them. How is this one held up? Well, it's actually held up quite well. The owners are smart. <laughs> Before they got this, they got an all-wheel drive version. This is front-wheel drive. <laughs> While they were driving it, it fell apart. The all-wheel drive system went kapooey. So they thought, well, I guess we don't want an all-wheel drive one. So they bought this with 20,000 miles on it with front-wheel drive. And what problems have they had with the transmission? None. So if you're going to get one of these, especially an older one, my advice, stay away from the all-wheel drive. Ford and their all-wheel drive systems aren't that great. They got enough problem with their four-wheel drive systems that they made for ages. Stay away from the all-wheel drive ones, believe me. They've had no problems with this one. It still runs perfectly fine. And as far as I'm concerned, all it has to do is because it was made in Oakville, Ontario. The Canadians put it together. All right, my Matrix was put together in Cambridge, Ontario. It's still Ontario and Canadians. They do a good job building cars. Actually, they do a better job than they do in Detroit these days. It's got a very dependable engine and transmission. They haven't had problems with it. The only thing they had to do because it overheated was they had to replace the plastic reservoir. And they have a feeling that when someone was working on the car, they broke it because it happened soon after that. But it is a... V6 engine, don't have that many problems, a very reliable automatic transmission, and for a vehicle of this size and weight and power, they got 25 miles a gallon getting here. That's not bad. That's real gas mileage, people, not the horse manure that the government EPA ratings give. Now, this is also a reason you really don't need an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. I had Lexus CUV. Company gave me, right? Took it to San Antonio back. Drove the speed limit. It got 24 miles a gallon. Well, all that technology, right? It was rated for 30 something, but that's total horse manure. I put it on cruise control. I went the speed limit. I drove like 200 miles. Then I refilled it, and that's all I got. So, this is real gas mileage. Pretty good for a car that's that old, still going down the road without any problem. Okay, it's a Ford and it has air conditioning, right? But they've never touched it and it still works. And interesting enough, this has tire pressure monitoring system. And until about a month ago, the system worked perfectly fine all those years. And it still worked. The batteries probably are starting to go out now. We'll find out more later when I put my scan tool on. But that those little batteries lasted all those years, that says something, you know? They don't build them like they used to. It's just front wheel drive. Not all-wheel drive. He's had no problems. He lives in Pennsylvania. And speaking of that, the owner truly believes the Canadians in Oakville rust proof them better. Because look at this. There is no rust. On a normal Ford of this age, there would be giant rust holes on the fender right here. And the doors and the rocker panels would be falling off of holes like cheese. But it's not the case. They must do a better job. The undercarriage is solid as can be. And being a crossover. It's got decent room here. It's got a decent sized trunk. You can put the seats down, you can carry a lot of stuff. It's the SEL fancy, so it's got dual sun, moon roofs, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so let's see what shape it's actually and electronically out with the big computer. So here we go. Now we'll do a full run through of this thing. This is a tire pressure fault. It says so right here. We'll figure out which one. Lee has read this, so we'll do a standalone diagnosis. Read the VIN number. Now it's decoding the VIN. 4V, 3.5 liter automatic federal emission. Okay, and we're gonna do a full scan. The topology of all the different can ones. Look how fast, man, that was fast. Okay, so we got six codes. 
So we'll start here. Instrument cluster. Communication with ABS. Data security. It starts okay. Well, he's disconnected the ABS system because it is broken down. He didn't want to spend any money fixing it. And if you know anything, on his old babies, it just reverts to normal non-ABS braking. He's happy with that. He doesn't care. So we're not worried about that. We'll go to the general electric module. Kind of like BCM, body control module. And it's got a nice display. It's an older car, but it's still got some controls on the steering column. Got a nicely set up dash dual climate control that still works and we got a bunch of nutty ones tire pressure sensor fault auto lamp on circuit short uh, who cares about the auto lamp it worked the lights work fine when you turn them on they work so we don't care about that but we'll just see out of curiosity what's going on here well it shows that the left rear sensor's gone bad but hey it's an old car all four are gonna go out he didn't want to spend any money he's got a tire pressure gauge so he doesn't care driver's seat module another thing we probably will not care about it's testing it now it's moving the driver driver's seat as I sit in it. Now look, it's doing it all by itself. I'm not touching anything. Well, these Fords have a system where they can check everything themselves automated. And here's what it came up with. Passenger side mirror circuit failure. So I mean, we really don't care. It works good enough for him. He's not complaining about anything. That's the problem with all these uh, modern cars. They have so many electronic hookahs. Here it goes again. It's moving the seat back and forth by itself. <laughs> While it's resetting the coast. So what we're going to do is start her up. And we'll look at some live data. We'll look at the power drink control module and live data which will pop up in a second there it is while we're waiting the front sun moon roof is gigantic the back one's a little smaller remember black's good red's bad there'll be a lot of data even though it's an older car gives you the turbine shaft speed of the transmission the airflow trim learned okay so it's only 0 0.04 0, 0.00 is perfect so it is only four one hundredths off that is nothing for a car that has 120 something thousand miles on it so here we are some more well, look through. It looks interesting. Oh, the EVAP system. Lots of stuff for the EVAP system. So you can fix them when they break and you don't have to guess. You can test them with a machine like this. A lot of self-diagnosis and all these say no fault on them. There's not a single one that says fault. They're on the pressure control slides on the transmission and they're all good. A lot of data and it's all good. So let's take it for a spin. So there we go for a spin. Of course, it's got no backup camera, so we got to look behind. It might be old, but it doesn't shake at all. Very smooth driving platform. And it's certainly high enough up in the air that we don't have to worry about this bump here. The water bump, it goes over it, no problem. And being a relatively heavy vehicle with a big V6 engine, it shouldn't ride all that bad. Now, it's still got the original shocks and struts on it. So here we go. Still rides pretty smooth. Now, yeah, all the lights are on because the traction control doesn't work. You disconnected the ABS. The tire pressure monitoring system doesn't work. And since he disconnected the ABS, the brake light's on. But it drives and runs perfectly fine. You can see the interior is still in excellent shape. Leather's not ripped. That's still in good shape. The dash isn't sticky. It's still clean. They're looking for people. Nobody to the left. Here we go. Wow, this thing spins out. <laughs> it spun out because it's been disabled. So be careful when you step on the gas. It may take off like a lunatic. Nice acceleration. Smooth transmission. The transmission still shifts like it did when it was new. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by the boys and Oakville, Ontario, who put this thing together. We'll wait to make our little turn. And here we go. Nice handling vehicle. Doesn't particularly under or oversteer. As long as you don't mind all these stupid lights being on, since we know they really don't mean anything, and you realize it no longer has traction control or ABS, this thing's fun to drive. As is we again, we'll try a little. There's nobody around now, so here we go. Look at that. Yeah, this baby does burnouts. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. I like it that the traction control has been disabled. If you ask me, it's still a good thing that in 2024, they're still building these edges in Oakville, Ontario. You Canadians did a good job. Keep building them. To heck with those electric crapper mobiles they're trying to shove down our throats. As the owner just said, it still drives like the day they bought it with 20,000 miles. You saw how it shifted like a dream, even at high RPMs. And now it does burnouts because they disconnected the ABS system and the traction control. So it's even more fun to drive if you know how to drive. So Ford, you know what I gotta say? You finally made the right decision. Instead of saying, 2023 will be the last model edge. We're gonna make electric cars. Guess what? 
in Oakville, Ontario, they are now building the 2024 Ford Edges with real gasoline motors in them, not electronic crap wagons, right? So, if you can find one of these in this kind of shape, snap it up. Just remember what I said in the beginning. Don't buy the all-wheel drive version or you'll regret it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.